Hi guys, welcome back to another video of mine. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in today's lesson is that we're going to go through Solomon at Excel uh, C1 paper A. So that's what we're, going, what we're going to be doing. Now the first question says express 21 over the square root of 7 in the form of k square root of 7. Now what we need to do is we need to rationalize this question. Now to do this we're going to multiply the denominator and numerator by the square root of 7. So we have 21 over the square root of 7. Now the main objective of rationalizing thirds is to eliminate the third from the denominator. To do that what we need to do is we need to multiply the denominator and the numerator by square root 7. Now when we do this you will see that the denominator initially the square root of 7 will not won't be there you will just have a, no, a normal number so 21 multiplied the square root of, square root of 7 gives us 21 square root 7 square root of 7 times square root of 7 gives us 7 the next stage is to decide how many times 7 goes into 21 well, the answer is 3. So we have 3 square root 7. Therefore, the value of k is equal to 3. Oops, let me write that a lot better. So 3. 1b, express 8 raised to the power of negative 1 third as an exact fraction in its simplest form. Now, to answer this question, what we need to know, uh, know is the indices rule. Now, one of the indices rule involves using negatives. So if we have x raised to the power of negative n, it is equal to 1 over x raised to the power of n. We're going to apply this indices rule to this question. So what we should have, we have a raised to the power of negative one third is equal to one over a raised to the power of one third. One, one over three is the cube root of eight. So we can rewrite it as one over the cube root of eight now the cube root of 8 is 2, so we have 1 over 2, and that's our final answer, 1 over 2. Question 2, evaluate the sum of 7 plus 2r. Now to answer this question, we need to find the very first number of this arithmetic series. To do that, what we need to do is substitute in the value of 10 into the, is this expression. So a, we put a as the first number, open bracket, 7 plus 2 times 10, close bracket, 2 times 10 is 20, plus the 7, 27. So our first number in the series is 27. Now again, we need to find the last number of the series. So I'm going to put 30 in this expression. So L open bracket 7 plus 2 times 30 close bracket. 2 times 30 is 60. 60 plus the 7 is 67. So L is 67. Now we need to find the number of terms in the series. So what we need to do is n is equal to 30 minus 9, which is equal to 21. We're now going to be using the equation, the sum of an arithmetic series, which is known as, sorry, let me just write it out, n over 2, open bracket, a, plus L. 
Now, all we're going to be doing is substitute the values that we know, a equals 27, l equals to 67, and n equals to 21, which into this equation, which will give us the total sum. So, as I said to you before, n is equal to 21, so I'm going to put 21 over 2, open bracket, 27 plus 67, close bracket. Let me simplify it further. So that's going to be 21 over 2, open bracket, 94. Again, that is 10.5 times it by 94, which will give us 987. So that's our final answer. Question three, differentiate with respect to x, 6x squared minus 1 over 2 square root x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite the question out like this. So it makes life a lot easier for me. So 6x squared over 2 square root x minus 1 over 2 square root x. The next step is to rewrite the square root as a half. So again, I'm going to 6 x squared over 2x raised to the power of a half and do the exact same thing over here. So we have 1 over 2x raised to the power of a half. Our next step is to divide 6 by 2 and using our indices skills when you divide with the same variable all you need to do is subtract. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. x squared divided by x raised to the power of half. When you have the same base and you're dividing, all you need to do is subtract. So 2 subtract a half gives us 3 raised to the power of 2. Oops, let me write that again. Now over here, it's going to be 1 over 2 x raised to the power of minus a half. Now when you differentiate, you're going to multiply the power by the number at the front. So 3 over 2 multiplied by 3 will give us 9 over 2. And you also need to minus, take away 1 from 3 over 2. Therefore, we should have 9 over 2 raised to the power of a half. We're going to use the exact same differentiation rules. So minus a half, you multiply the power with the number in the front, minus a half. So minus a half times minus a half gives us positive one quarter. X. And then we're going to, again, subtract, take away from one from one over a half, sorry, minus a half. So what we should have is minus three over two. And that's our final answer. Let me just squeeze that in a different color. So that's Our final answer. Question 4a. Solve the inequality x squared plus 3x greater than 10. 4b. Find the set of values of x which satisfy both the following inequalities. 3x minus 2 less than x plus 3. x squared plus 3x greater than 10. Now I'm just going to start a question 4a. 4a says solve the inequality. Now we need to find a set of values for x that satisfy this inequality. To do this, I'm just going to, first of all, subtract both sides 
by 10. So let me quickly write, let me change the color first. So 4a over here, I'm just going to treat it like a normal quadratic equation. So 3x greater than 10. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract both sides by 10. So what we have is x squared plus 3x minus 10 greater than 0. I'm just going to factorize this inequality. So two numbers that you multiply together that gives us negative 10 but adds up to 3. So x plus 5, close brackets, x minus 2, greater than 0. So 5 times negative 2 gives us negative 10. 5 minus 2 gives us 3. Now to find the roots, I'm going to equate x plus 5 to 0 and x minus 2 to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. I'm just going to solve it. So x is equal to minus 5 and over here x is equal to 2. Now if I was to sketch this inequality, so let me find And the roots are minus 5 over here, cuts in at minus 10, and you have 2. So if I was to draw my quadratic graph, it would look something like this. Now we need a set of values for x to satisfy this inequality. It says greater than zero. Val we need to find values of x that are greater than zero. So obviously, this is zero right here. So the way I look at it is numbers that are greater than two, x greater than two, will have values of y which are greater than zero. So x greater than two is one part of the uh, question. The second part is values less than minus five also have values of y which are greater than zero. So that's another part answer to the question. So x less than minus five. So our answer is x less than minus 5 and x greater than 2. You can always double check. For example, if we go back to the original question, x squared plus 3x greater than 10. So let me write that down over here x squared plus 3x greater than 10. Oops. Now I'm just going to plug in values which are greater than 2. So I'm going to put 3. So 3 in there. So 3 squared plus 3 open bracket 3 now, for it to satisfy this inequality, it needs to fulfill, fulfill this inequality. It needs to be greater than 10. So, 3 squared, 9, plus 3 times 3, 9, greater than 10. 9 plus 9 is 18. 
18 greater than 10? Yes. So that's one way of checking your answer. Let's do another one. Get on the page nine over here. Let, let's let x equals to minus 10. Over here we did let x equal to 3. So open brackets minus 10 squared plus three open brackets minus 10 greater than 10. Minus 10 squared is 100 plus three times negative 10 which is minus 30 greater than 10. 100 minus 30 is 70 greater than 10. 70 is greater than 10, so yeah. So I know for a fact that our answer is x less than minus 5 and x greater than 2. So this method just helped me prove my answer. Question 4b, find the set of values of x which satisfy both the following inequalities. 3x minus 2 less than x plus 3 x squared plus 3x greater than 10. Now my first step is to label the top inequality as 1 and the bottom one as 2. Now we've already solved inequality 2 which was part a. All we need to do is solve inequality number 1. So let me just do it right now. So we have 3 x minus 2 less than x plus 3. First, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus x from both sides. We're left with 2x minus 2 less than 3. I'm then going to add 2 to both sides. So it's 2x less than 5. I'm then going to divide both sides by 2. So we have x less than 5 over 2. Now using our answers from part A, so let me just write the answers for part A. We had x oops, greater than 2 x less than minus 5 and x less than 5 over 2. I'm going to combine all three of them to give us a overall answer. So first one is x less than x less than 5 over 2. And the last one is x less than minus 5. Now, what you should recognize is, if I draw a quick number line, and 2 is over here, and 2.5 is over here, the values in between So 2 and 5 over 2, these are the values that satisfy the inequalities, both the inequalities combined together. And also we have minus 5. Again, values less than minus 5 will also satisfy both the inequalities, 1 and 2. So our main objective at the beginning was to find a set of values that satisfy both the inequalities. Well, we have. We have, let's make this scroll down. We have x less than x 
sorry, 2 less than x less than 5 over 2. So the values in between these two numbers satisfy both inequalities. And values less than minus 5 also satisfy both the inequalities, x less than minus 5. So that's our final answer. Our final answer, move up, is over here. Question 5. The sequence u1, u2, u3 is defined by the reoccurrence relation. un plus 1 equals un squared minus 1 when n is greater than or equal to 1. Given that u1 equals k, where k is a constant. 5a. Find an expression for u2 and u3 in terms of k. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to substitute the value of u1 which equals k into this equation. So we're going to start off, I'm just going to start off by writing it out. So un plus 1 equals minus 1. Now u1 plus 1 is equal to, open bracket, k squared minus 1. Therefore, u1 plus 1, 2 is equal to k squared minus 1. So we've done that. We found the value of u2, which is k squared minus 1. Now we're going to repeat the exact same process, but this time u2 is equal to k squared minus 1. We're going to plug it back into the equation. So u2 plus 1 is equal to open brackets k squared minus 1, close brackets minus 1. Now, oops, squared over here. Now I'm just going to rewrite it as it's going to expand the brackets k squared times k squared is k raised to the power of 4 k squared times negative 1 is minus k squared minus 1 times k squared is minus k squared again. Minus 1 times minus 1 gives us positive 1. Minus 1 over here. I'm just going to simplify it further. So you have u3 is equal to k raised to the power of 4 minus 2k squared. Yep, and that's our answer. So we've got u3 is equal to k raised to the power of 4 minus 2k squared and u2 was equal to k squared minus 1. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on 5b. Given also that u2 plus u3 equals 11, find the possible values of k. So from the previous question 5a, we learned that the values of u2 and u3 were u2 equals k squared minus 1 and u3 equals k raised to the power of 4 minus 2k squared. Now all I'm going to do is substitute the values of u2 and u3 into this equation. u2 plus u3 equals 11. So effectively we have k squared minus 1 plus k raised to the power of 4 minus 2 k squared equals 11. At this point I'm going to collect like for like terms. So we have 
k raised to the power of 4 minus k squared minus 1 equals 11. I'm going to equate it to 0 by minusing 11 from both sides. So we have k raised to the power of 4 minus k squared minus 12 equals 0. Now I'm going to factorize the polynomial. What two numbers do you multiply together to give us negative 12 and adds up to negative 1? Well, minus 4 and positive 3. Therefore, when factorizing the polynomial, we have open brackets k raised to the power of 2 minus 4 close brackets open brackets k raised to the power of 2 plus 3 close brackets equals 0. Now I'm going to solve for the value of k. So I'm going to equate k squared minus 4 to 0 and k squared plus 3 to 0. So we have k squared minus 4 equals 0. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, so effectively we have k squared equals 4. Square root both sides, so k equals positive negative 2. Now I'm going to equate k squared plus 3 to 0. k squared plus 3 equals 0. Minus 3 from both sides. k squared equals negative 3. You can't square root a negative number, therefore the value of k is k equals minus 2 and positive 2. That's your final answer. Question 6a. By completing the square, find in terms of the constant k the root of the equation x squared plus 4kx minus k equals 0. Now the first thing we need to do is complete the square. So let me just rewrite the question out. We have x oops, in black pen. Looks a lot neater. x squared plus 4kx minus k equals 0. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add k to both sides, plus k. What we're left with is x squared plus 4kx plus a number, underline it so far at this point, plus k. Now to find this value, what we need to do is divide 4k by 2 and square it. So what we should have is x squared plus 4kx plus 4k squared equals k plus 4k squared. Now we need to find the perfect square, so we're going to divide 4k by 2, so we, we should have x plus 
2k squared is equal to k plus 4k squared. Now, all I need to do is re rearrange the equation to find the value of x, the root. So we have 2 raised to the, x, uh, to the power of 2, and the square root both sides. So what we should have is x plus 2k is equal to the square root of k plus 4k squared. I'm then going to subtract both sides, 2k. So what we should have is x is equal to minus 2k plus or minus the square root of k plus 4k squared. And that's our final answer. 6b, hence find the set of values of k for which the equation has no real root. Now I'm going to be using the answer from 6a to solve 6b. So the answer to 6a was x is equal to 2k plus or minus the square root k plus 4k squared. Now I'm going to be using this part of the equation, k plus 4k squared, and set it to less than zero. So k plus 4k squared less than zero. I'm now going to factorize it. So I'm going to take the common variable, which is the k. So k, open bracket, one plus 4k less than zero. So, we have, let me just look at this. So k is equal to zero. I'm going to equate this part to zero. So one plus four k equals zero. And let's solve for it. So minus a quarter. So our two values of k is 0 and minus a quarter. I'm just going to do a quick sketch which would represent a quadratic and we have minus a quarter and 0. So it should go between like that. And we are looking for a set of values that satisfy this inequality less than zero. So the range when x is between minus a quarter and zero, the value of y is less than zero. So between these two numbers, I know that it satisfies this inequality. So our answer is going to be minus a quarter x, sorry, less than x less than zero. And that's our final answer. So 7a states, describe fully a single transformation that maps the graph of y equals one over x onto the graph of y equals three over x. So the answer to this question is, One second. The function of y equals 1 over x is stretched and transformed by a factor of 3 on a function y equals 3 over x about the x-axis. Okay, so that's what you need to write down to get your full two marks. 7b, sketch the graph of y equals 3 over x and write down the equation of any asymptotes. Okay, so this is my sketch of y equals 3 over x, y 
equals three over x and its asymptotes are x equals zero and y equals zero as well okay so that's your answer to 7b 7c find the value of the constant c for which the straight line y equals c minus 3x is a tangent to the curve y equals 3 over x now the first thing i'm going to do i'm just going to rearrange the equation for the curve so we have i don't like it in this form y equals 3 over x i'm just going to rewrite it as y equals 3x raised to the power of negative 1. I'm then going to differentiate the curve so I can find the gradient. So dy by dx is equal to minus 3x raised to the power of minus 2. Now at this point, the value of the gradient of the curve is equal to the gradient of the straight line. So I'm going to equate them both together. So what we have is minus 3x raised to the power of negative 2 is equal to minus 3. Again, let me just rewrite this out over here. Minus 3 over x squared equals minus 3. I'm going to cross multiply. So what we should have is minus 3 is equal to minus 3x squared. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So what we should have is 1 equals x squared. I'm going to put the x on the other side. x squared is equal to 1. I'm going to square root both sides. So what we should have is plus or minus 1. Now to find the value of y, all I'm going to be doing is substitute the value plus or minus 1 into y equals 3 over x. So let x equal to minus 1. When x is equal to minus 1, so y is equal to 3 over minus 1, therefore y is equal to minus 3. So we have minus 1 minus 3. And let x equal 1. So again, y equals 3 over 1, y is therefore equal to 3, so what we have is 1 and 3. I'm going to be using these coordinates to substitute them into the equation of, oops, let me scroll up, so we have y equals c minus 3x. So we have y equals c minus 3x. Again, so I'm going to be using these coordinates to substitute into this equation to find the value of c. So the first one I'm going to be using is this one over here. So minus 3 equals c minus 3 open bracket minus 1. Now, minus 3 times it by minus 1 gives us a positive 3. So we have 3 equals c plus 3. So then I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. So we have minus 6 is equal to c. Do the exact same thing 
but this time I'm going to be using the points 1 and 3. So we have y is equal to c minus 3x using the points 1 and 3. The value of y is equal to 3 is equal c minus 3 open bracket 1 close bracket minus 3 times it by 1 gives us minus 3 so what we should have is 3 open equal sorry minus 3 I'm then going to add 3 to both sides so we have 6 equals C so C equals 6 so 6 can either be plus or minus 6 and that's our final answer question 8 the points P and Q have coordinates 7, 4, and 9, 7, respectively. A. Find the equation for the straight line L which passes through P and Q. Give your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0, where A, B, and C are integers. It's worth 4 marks. The straight line M has a gradient. 8 and passes through the origin O. B. Write down an equation for M, which is 1 mark. The line L and M intersect at the point R. C. Show that OP equals OR, which is worth 5 marks. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start question A. It says find an equation for a straight line which passes through P and Q. Now, the equation of a straight line is always represented as y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So the first thing I need to do is find the gradient. Now to find the gradient, we're going to be using this equation. So the gradient, right over here, is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I'm just going to write the points over here. So we have P is equal to 7, 4, and Q is equal to 9, 7. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to label each of these coordinates or points x1, y1. Okay, so this is my x1, this is my y1. Now the Q is x2 y2. Once I've established that, what I'm going to be doing next is substitute these values into this equation and work out the gradient. So, the gradient right over here is equal to y2, which is y2 is 7, so it'll be 7 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, x2 is 9, minus x1, which is 7. Let me simplify it further. 7 minus 4, 3. 9 minus 7, 2. So the gradient is equal to 3 over 2. Now we've got the first part of the equation of a straight line, so y is equal to 3 over 2x plus c. Now we need to find the value of c, the y-intercept. To do that, I'm just going to substitute one of these points into this equation. So I'm going to use q. So I'm going to let x equal 9 and y equals 7 
and this is again from the the point Q. I'm going to substitute these values into the equation. So what we should have, scroll up, is seven equals three over two open brackets nine close brackets plus c get to multiply the brackets so seven is equal to 27 over 2 plus c i'm going to subtract 27 over 2 from both sides so what we should have is 7 minus 27 over 2 equals c I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So it's 14 over 2 minus 27 over 2 is equal to C. 14, 14 over 2 minus 27 over 2 is equal to minus 13 over 2. Is C. So we found the value of C. So it's y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 13 over 2. I'm now just going to rearrange it in the form of ax plus by plus c equals 0. So first of all, I'm going to equate the equation to zero. So what we should have is minus three over two x plus y plus 13 over two equals zero. I'm then going to multiply both, num both the terms in this equation by 2. So minus 3x plus 2y plus 13 equals 0. I don't really want minus 3 so as my first number. So I'm, I'm just going to multiply the terms in this equation by minus 1. So minus 3x times it by negative 1 is equal to 3x. 2y multiplied by negative 1 is negative 2y. And minus 1 multiplied by 13 is equal to minus 13, 0. Now the value of a is equal to 3. The value of b is equal to minus 2 and the value of c is equal to minus 13 and that's the answers for 8a. 8b, the straight line m has the gradient 8 and passes through the origin o. Write down an equation for m. This is a pretty straightforward question. The gradient is given to us and it passes through the origin so it's going to be y equals 8x and that's our answer for b. 8c the line l and m intersect at the point r. c show that op equals or. Now the first thing we need to do is find the point where line l and m intersect. To do that we're going to substitute the equation that we've written in 8b into the equation we found the straight line L, 8a. Okay, so let me just write down the equation of the straight line for L, which was 3x minus 2y minus 13 equal 0. That was what we found in A. B, the equation of the straight line was y equals 
8x. Now to find where they intersect, I'm going to substitute the equation m into equation, straight line of equation, into l. So the value of y is equal to 8, substitute into the equation, so we should have 3x minus 2, open brackets, 8x, close brackets, minus 13 equals 0. I'm then going to expand the brackets, so it's 3x minus 16x minus 13 equals 0. This will give me, the when you collect or simplify the x terms, what we should have is minus 13x minus 13 equals 0. I'm going to add 13 to both sides. So what we should have is minus 13x is equal to 13. Divide both sides by minus 13. Therefore, the value of x is equal to minus 1. Now we need to find out where the value of y is. To do that, it's going to substitute into the equation of y equals 8x. So y equals 8, open brackets, 1, minus, sorry, minus 1 close brackets, so therefore y is equal to minus 8. So the point where the lines L and M intersect is minus 1 and minus 8. Now, let me just visualize this part of the, the last part where we need to find OP is equal to OR. So we've established that the point of R is minus 1 minus 8 and the point P is 7 4. So if I was to draw a quick sketch of the points What you should recognize is this is the origin over here. Minus 1 minus 8 is over here. So let me just draw it. Use a different color. And 7, 4, 7, 4 over here. So again, let me use a different color. So what I'm going to be doing now is use Pythagoras theorem to find the distance from O to P and from O to R. So this is 1 and this is 8. What we have over here is 7 and 4. Now, Pythagoras theorem, let me change the color, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now again, it doesn't really matter which sides a and b is interchangeable, but I'm going to label this a and label this b. So what we should have is 1 squared plus 8 squared equals C. So this is from O, R. 1 squared is 1 plus 8 squared is 64 equals C squared. 64 plus 1 is 65 squared. Arrange the equation to make C the subject, square root both sides, so square root of 65 is C. 
So C, the, sorry, the distance from O, R, is equal to the square root of 65. I'm going to repeat the exact same process, but this time obviously be using the points of P. Now, use Pythagoras A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We have 7 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. 7 squared is 49 plus 16 equals C squared. 49 plus 16 gives us 65 equals C squared. Going to square root both sides, so we have square root of 65 is equal to C. Therefore, the distance of OP is exactly the same as OR, which is the square root of 65. And that's our answer. So OR is equal to the square root of 65, OP is equal to the square root of 65. And that's what we wanted to prove. So let me just write it over here. Yep. 9a, figure one shows the curve with the equation y equals f of x, which crosses the x-axis at the origin and at the points a and b. Given that the derivative function is equal to 6 minus 4x minus 3x squared, a, find an expression for y in terms of x, which is worth 5 marks, and b, show that ab equals k square root 7, where k is an integer to be found, it's worth 6 marks. So we're going to be focusing on 9a. So 9a, find an expression for y in terms of the x. So we have the derivative of the function equals 6 minus 4x minus 3x squared. So the first thing I need to do is integrate the derivative of the function. So let me just make some space. So the derivative of the function We'll write it out over here, is 6 minus 4x minus 3x squared. I'm going to integrate it, so, which will give us the y. So we should have 6x over here, raise the power by 1 and then divide it by, so it should be 2x squared and on this side we should have x cubed. So our answer is y equals 3x minus 2x squared minus x cubed. 9b show that ab equals k square root 7 where k is an integer to be found. It's worth six marks. Now to answer this question, what we need is the answer to 9a. So I'm going to write down the answer to 9a. So the answer was y equals 6x minus 2x squared minus x cubed. Now I'm then going to factorize this equation further by taking out the common variable. So the common variable was y equals minus x, open brackets, x squared plus 2x minus 6. I'm then going to factorize what's inside the brackets using the quadratic formula. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to negative 6. So the formula q quad is 
minus b plus or minus, let me extend that a little bit, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Substituting these values into this equation. So b was 2, so we have minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So b squared was 4 minus 4 open brackets 1 open close brackets minus 6 close brackets over 2 times 1 which is 2. Now I'm going to simplify it further so what we should have is minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 2 going to simplify this square root of 28 further so it's minus 2 plus or minus 2 square root 7 over 2. Again we can simplify this further as minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 7. Now the value now the point of a is let me just now the root of a is minus square root 7 minus 1 and b is equal to square root 7 minus 1. Now we need to add point a and point b together. However we've got a slight problem. The problem is point a is heading in the opposite direction. Now to solve that problem, I'm going to multiply a by negative 1. So minus 1, open bracket, minus 7, square root 7, minus 1. So that's going to be square root 7 plus 1, which is equal to a. Now I have b. Now all I'm going to do is add them together, so square root 7 plus square root 7 plus 1 minus 1 and what we should have is a b is equal to 2 square root 7, that cancels out and that's our answer, the value of k is equal to 2. In this lesson, I'll be focusing on 10a. A curve has the equation y equals x plus 3 over x, where x can't be 0. The point p on the curve has x coordinate 1. Show that the gradient of the curve at p is minus 2. To find the gradient of the straight line p, we need to differentiate y equals x plus 3 over x. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the question as y equals x plus 3 x raised to the power of minus 1. So y equals x plus 3x raised to the power of minus 1. I'm now going to differentiate y equals x plus 3x minus 1. So we have d y by d x is equal to 1 minus 3 x raised to the power of negative 2. Now I'm going to substitute the value of x which is 1 into d y by d x. So we have 1 minus 3 open bracket 1 close bracket raised to the power of negative 2. Now 1 raised to the power of negative 2 is 1. So we have 1 minus 3 open bracket 1 close brackets. 
3 times 1 is 3. So effectively, we have 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Minus 2. Therefore, the gradient at point P is minus 2. So in this video, all I'm going to be concentrating on is question 10B and 10C. 10B says find an equation for the normal to the curve at P, giving your answer in the form y equals mx plus c. And C, find the coordinates of the point where the normal to the curve at P intersects the curve again. So, just going to start off at B. B is worth four marks. First thing we need to do is to calculate the gradient of the normal. To do that, we're going to divide minus 1 with the gradient at p. Now, we are given the gradient at p, which we calculated early on at 10a. So, the gradient at normal is minus 1 divided by minus 2, which is equal to a half. So the, sorry, normal over here. Now, we need to put it into this uh, equation of line. So y equals mx plus c. We know what the gradient is, which is a half. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. So y equals a half x plus c. Now we need to find the value of c. To do that, we're just going to use the point of p. So p, we've got 1 and 4. The value of 1 is x, the value of 4 is y. We're going to substitute into the equation. So we have 4 equals a half open brackets, y, close brackets, plus c. A half times 1 is a half, so we have 4 equals a half plus c. I'm going to rearrange the equation to make c the subject, so I'm going to minus a half from both sides. So bear with me. Therefore, that's going to be a. So the value of c is seven over two, which can be rewritten as y equals a half x plus seven over two. So that's our answer to ten b. So what we're going to be doing in 10c is that we're going to equate the equation of the curve to the equation of the normal. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we have x plus 3 over x equals 2 a half x plus 7 over 2. Let me just rewrite this out as x squared plus 3 over x equals x plus 7 over 2. Now I'm going to cross multiply. So 2 open brackets x squared plus 3 close brackets equals x open bracket x plus 7. 2 times x squared gives us 2x squared. 2 times 3 plus 6 equals x times x, x squared. x times 7, 7x. Going to rearrange the equation to make equate it to 0. Going to subtract x squared from both sides. So we're left with 2, sorry, x squared plus 6 equals 7x. I'm then going to subtract 7x from both sides. We have x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 7x plus 7x. Now I'm going to subtract 
plus 6 equals 0. I'm now going to factorize x squared minus 7x plus 6. So I'm going to open my brackets. So x goes over here, x goes over here. Let's steal the signs, minus, minus. Two numbers multiplied together that gives us 6 and adds up to negative 7. We have a 6 and a 1. I'm going to equate what's in the brackets to 0 to find the roots. So x minus 6 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 6. And over here is x minus 1 equals 0. And add 1 to both sides. So x equals to 1. We're not finished yet. We found the value of x. Now we need to find the value of y. So to do that, what I'm going to do is substitute the value y into, I don't know, let's just select the curve of the equation. So the curve of the equation is y equals x plus 3 over x. Now I'm going to let x equal 6. So I'm going to substitute 6 into this equation. So we have y equals open bracket 6 close bracket plus 3 divided by open bracket 6 close bracket and so it's 6 plus a half so the value of y is 6.5 uh -huh. So when x is equal to 6, so the coordinate of 6, when x equals 6, y equals to 6.5. Now I'm going to follow the exact same process, but this time I'm going to let x equal 1. So let x equal 1. I'm going to substitute it back into this equation to find the value of y. So y is equal to open brackets 1, close brackets, plus 3 over open brackets 1, close brackets. It's going to simplify it to so 1 plus 3. y equals to 4. Therefore, when x is equal to 1, y equals to 4. So the coordinate is 1 and 4. So our answer is 6, 6.5 and 1 and 4.